so we're here and we've changed the name of the session slightly because um yeah we've been calling this effort fedora websites 3.0 and that usually ends up with a lot of um blockchain jokes and this is nothing to do with blockchain so we're going to call it fedora websites 2022 in the uh the old Fedora websites tradition where we'll name every revamp off the year it started. So, um, oh, let me get in the right window here. So what does this talk about and what is it not about? We're talking about Fedora's websites. We're not talking about applications like say Moat or um, I don't know, not infrastructure apps like say Pagur. We're talking about the websites. So like the Fedora website, the Flock website, start that Fedora project at org. That's sort of like the space we're talking about. Um, okay, so like, what is the point of the website? The point of Fedora's website is to share our story. It's our main front door to the world. Anybody who is interested in learning more about Fedora, anybody who's interested in downloading and using Fedora, joining our community, that's the front door that they've got to go through, right? And that is our opportunity to tell our story. Now, we've been telling a lot of different stories from all the different aspects of Fedora, and we're trying to come to sort of a unified strategy that Matthew talked about in his um state of fedora talk this morning right so once we have the story and we agree on it we have to tell it to people um so i have this model i i posted it a while back in like the fedora community blog um but this is what i call the the conceptual model for the fedora project right so this is not to do with like the community and the people this is to do with what we deliver and i would say like a lot of our users based on matthew's state of fedora talk are here but we're getting more users here where they're deploying Fedora IoT and we're getting more users. Well, we, we've always had users here and the server space too. But the idea is you start, you know, the doorway, you start using Fedora as a workstation. And what we want to happen is for people as they use Fedora as a workstation, that we make it very easy to pick up the best of breed um, open source tech for development. So you never have to become a developer. We're not only focusing on developers, but we want to enable developers who are using Fedora to develop the open source way. And we have a specific prescription for which technologies we think are the best that we're behind that we deploy by default. Like for example, you know, we'd like people using Podman to create containers. So why don't we make it so it's very easy and seamless to use Podman once you're using Fedora, right? Okay. So this is the community side of it, right? And this shouldn't be new to you really, right? So the first thing is Fedora is the community. If you say Fedora, a naked Fedora, we'll call it, you're referring to the community. If you're referring to the actual, what we produce, what we ship, what we give to people, that's Fedora Linux. It's an OS or it's the addition, Fedora Workstation, Fedora IoT, et cetera. Um, and then the other half of this, of course, is the Fedora Project's vision, which is, you know, everyone benefiting from free and open source software. That's why we're all here. We want open source and free software to win. We want everybody to benefit from it. And we want that built by inclusive, welcoming and open-minded communities. That is a key part of our structure as well. Okay, so we have the story, great, awesome. How do we tell the story? So I'm just gonna walk you through like a speed run to the website's history. And sadly, I've been a part of it since the beginning pretty much so don't ask me how old i am but um this is going to be like a speed run right so we started out this was like 2004 2005 just a dump of links then we set up a moin moin wiki and that was our website a moin moin wiki got slow got a bit disorganized and chaotic okay all right so then we kind of you know we got complex and then we simplified again this was the website and you may actually like i got a 404 message this morning that used this template well it's from 2007. this was just a simple static website it was like three or four pages it started as three pages and went to four pages okay so then but that was a little too simple right so then this was like our first real website like felt real it had like these these sections like we interviewed this was before how do you fedora that interview series we would interview fedora users and ask them how they would use it and you know ask them what their favorite apps were we had little suggested activities and stuff like that so this one was like host a photo booth party using cheese on fedora that was whatever maybe a cheesy idea um and then we also had sort of an open source principles section where we would talk about the the four f's of fedora it was great right 
All of that content was written when the website was first rolled out in 2010, and then it sat and it never got updated. And do you know why? Because number one, there was no CMS. Number two, to actually modify that content, you had to be like, I think at the time we were using Git, it might have been subversion, but in either case, you had to have a skill set that doesn't normally mesh too well with people who are very good at writing content like this. So it just sat and it went stale. By the time we had to update it, that was part of the Fedora Next initiative that Matthew also mentioned this morning, where we decided we're not just shipping one Fedora, we're shipping multiple Fedoras and they're fit for different purposes. So, you know, this design was focused on one single thing. It didn't have that in mind. So with that and the stale content, we decided, ah, we'll just start from scratch yet again. And that's, you know, the last generation before our current one, where here we focus so much on the additions. The actual front page was just like a splash you clicked through. It wasn't a place you spent time. And this was part of a larger strategy, which I'll talk about, where we were trying to separate user-oriented content from contributor-oriented content. Um, and this is part of that strategy. So this idea was here. This is like the, the front door when you come to Fedora as a user. And we didn't want to put pressure on you. Don't You don't have to become a contributor. We just want you to use it. Please just use it. And then once you're a contributor, you had like all these different places you could go. And the split was not just user contributor. The split was these are the Fedora additions we want you to focus on. And then these are sort of the emerging or community maintained modifications on Fedora, like spins, things like that. And these are part of our ecosystem too. But there was a split between those two things because we didn't want the users to start using a random spin and think it had the same level of support as an addition when it didn't, if that makes sense. So there was like these two splits we'll talk about a little bit later. And then this is today's Fedora website. Um, and as I can share the slides, like all of these, I have, I, I did dumpster diving, well not dumpster diving, but you know what I mean? I went into old mailman archives on HyperKitty and I dug up all the old discussions and mockups for everything and there's links here. Um, you could waste a lot of time exploring that stuff. But um, so this is like today's website. You can see it's it's focused on the additions. It brings in a little bit closer some of the extra downloads, like these spins and labs and alternative download sites. I don't even think were mentioned on the first brochure style website that we had talked about as the previous version to this. Um, and part of this was this was an effort by um, Ryan and Ricky to sort of revive the website, make it static, a static content website, like a statically built website. So it was very fast. It was less security issues, less performance issues. And it's great, but it's still part of that split um, between the community and the users and between the additions and the rest that Fedora has to offer. So these are some of the mockups of the new website that Fedora 2022 website that we're working on. And what you'll see pervasive throughout the mockups when you examine them, there's detailed descriptions and um, feedback loops about them in the discourse. So if you just look up Fedora revamp website, you'll, you'll find them all. Um, we're trying to integrate the community um, up, up ramps. I don't know what to call it. So taking people from being users and sort of guiding them gently into how they can be contributors. There's things like when you go to the download page, it suggests, hey, you know, we see you're downloading with no Clippy. You know, why don't you try downloading the beta and then test it for us and then submit this form and let us know how it went and become a contributor. So we have all these little on-ramps um, that are embedded contextually throughout the site. Um, yeah, no Clippy, maybe a beefy. It would be nice to have a little beefy, but anyway, yeah. Um, so just an overview. This is sort of what came out of this whole history, right? Like we need something that's performant and secure. Like running your website with Moin Moin behind it, not a great idea. Um, the content needs to be managed. It needs to be accessible to people generating the content. They, they need to be able to not be an uber kernel hacker to be able to contribute and maintain content. Sorry, but that's how it has to be. It has to be fun to contribute to. Um, you shouldn't have to learn a new, new exotic, unique custom stack just to change some minor thing on a web page. We should be using modern web tech that everybody has familiarity with, right? And then it has to be flexible and expandable. So that was like the problem with our first real website. It was oriented towards one Fedora deliverable. So when we decided to change our strategy and have multiple additions, oops, <laughs> it didn't account for that. And the way it was built didn't allow us to just 
graph that on. So these are sort of the four things I think that we've learned. And then we also have this other issue of the split, right? So we split additions versus the rest of Fedora. Why aren't they more together? Why can't I find them all in one place? Why do I have to go through all of these different subdomains? And I blame me for that. That was my silly idea. Um, and then also the split between users and contributors. That was a deliberate decision that we made. And the idea is that we would have a very minimalist, user-centric, um, sort of user-oriented website that we called the brochure site. And then we would have something called Fedora Hubs, which is a long dead project at this point, where it would be sort of a contributor's area, like an integrated everything where you could just go to your team's page and like see issue, like a widget for issues and whatever. It was a great idea, but it didn't work out. Um, so it's, it's time to get the bands back together again. So that's Fedora Revamp 2022. So how are we doing this? Now, Sayak can speak more to this. Um, so I will hand it over to you unless you'd like me to do it too. I'm happy, whatever. Sure, I can go ahead. Um, uh, so, yeah, feel free to step in anytime you feel something to add. Okay, so uh, how are we building it, right? Uh, so we have an awesome intern uh, with this uh, Ashlyn Knox. Uh, so when we were going through this initial efforts, uh, she did a lot of uh, evaluations and uh, uh, after a lot of uh, evaluation of platforms like uh, Vue.js, React, Fast API, and a bunch of other options out there. Uh, and uh, with the consultation of, of the websites and apps team, uh, we found out uh, that there was a certain configuration which we felt was the best uh, way forward for us. And that was uh, this particular stack that you see in front of you. Um, we have Vue.js on the front end, uh, which is basically a very popular accessible JavaScript framework for front-end components. And we are using white uh, to uh, create the builds for it. Uh, on the, uh, on, for uh, enabling uh, the sites we built statically, we are using Nuxjs behind it. And uh, for the seamless part of the things, we are using Netlify. Uh, another conscious decision that we made was uh, to use uh, Tailwind CSS uh, because of all the utility classes it provides. Uh, but yeah, this is the, the base stack on which we are building the next set of websites and applications uh, going forward. If you want to uh, go through uh, the repository, you can go to the GitLab site. I'm sure we'll be sharing the slides later on. You can uh, use that to check it out. And uh, with that, uh, we can move forward to the next slide. Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> oh yeah. No worries. Uh, so yeah, where are we right now? Uh, so what's the current status? Uh, the current status is uh, we are in a stage wherein we are at the same time uh, going through a lot of design mockups and uh, also developing on the go. So at this moment, uh, we have had multiple rounds of feedback around the design mockups that we have had. And uh, we have sort of uh, established a final set of uh, mockups that need to be implemented. A uh, bit of work is still going on with that, but uh, we have a good idea of where we want to go with the designs. Um, now, where are we on the code? So, we have decided uh, that uh, with the set of uh, mockups, we want to co convert them into interactive POCs uh, by uh, creating relevant front end and back end uh, pieces. So, what we are doing right now is that we have uh, created a kind of a we are experimenting with a kind of a framework uh, using which we would be building the future sites. And uh, uh, once we have a good, uh, like, you know, framework ready, uh, we would be using that framework to create the initial websites uh, and we will start entering the content and preparing it for the final rendering of the websites, uh, translations, localization, everything. So yeah, right now we are in, uh, we have already started the work and we are moving forward to the next uh, phase. So now uh, what's the next phase? The next phase uh, involves you know, setting up the staging, gathering feedback and facilitating the finale. Uh, a lot of people might think that documentation would also come in the next set, but we have already started with it because, again, we believe that you know, starting with a good set of documentation to go with right from the beginning allows uh, 
community uh, contributors to be more let me, to make it just more easier for contributors to understand what are the different pieces that we are developing and how things work together, how they come together, and wherein they can start uh, to contribute by directly jumping into the project. So, uh, how are we going to uh, do this uh, going forward? Uh, that is the, the facilitation of the final and stuff. Uh, we are start planning to start with two sides. Uh, one is the Flock to Fedora side, uh, which is about this event uh, that we are in. Uh, so, Flock to Fedora uh, website is about Flock, Nest, Hatch, and all such events. And as uh, uh, we go forward, we are planning to uh, do uh, do with the makeover of this site. And the other uh, site that we are working on is the start page. Uh, so, uh, start.fedora is the page that uh, whenever you open up uh, Firefox, for example, in your Fedora uh, machine, uh, that's the default landing page that it takes you to. It's basically an aggregation site which pulls in stuff and shows it uh, to your work there. The, work, the, the, the scope of work is small, but it is a great uh, starting point for uh, newbies and people who are new to the project who want to get started with contributions. And uh, so where do we uh, go from here, like after we start this? Uh, the the long-term goal is that we have a bunch of other sites that we want to uh, go on with. But really, uh, the plan is to keep evolving as we go. And what do we need for that? We need a lot of contributions. So this is also a kind of a shout out to uh, probably everyone who is out there right now to uh, like you know just come forward uh, and help us with this effort. Uh, there are a ton of ways to you know get involved with us. You can join us on Matrix. Uh, you can join our uh, weekly calls. Uh, on Jitsi, so we have a weekly calls at 1500 UTC every Tuesday, and uh, we have two types of new contributor trainings planned uh, for the future. Uh, one is we are creating components, uh, like we want to have videos uh, which help you to get started with creating components for uh, Fedora's websites uh, in Vue.js, and also uh, we are also planning to do hackfest and video trainings for content entry. If anyone wants to check out the code. Uh, you can check out the core at GitLab. It's gitlab.com slash Fedora websites, apps, and Fedora websites. And uh, if anyone is interested in going to our documentation, you can go to docs.fedoraproject.org uh, slash websites. And with that, uh, it's back to uh, you. Uh, more. Yeah, and I just want to say, um, Ashlyn has actually given us as sort of a trial um, she's tested her training for Vue.js component writing on both me and Madeline Peck from the Fedora design team. So we did sort of pair coding sessions with her where she walked us through how to create new components from scratch. And it's, it's very accessible. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's something that you don't need to have a high level of coding familiarity with to be able to contribute to. And I think it's fantastic because it means that designers can have more um, impact and control over how their de design shows up in the code because they can contribute to the components directly. If building website components is something of interest to you, what it's going to end up being is Ashlyn's going to take the content from the one-on-one -on -one sessions she did with me and Madeline and a couple other people and record sort of a training, a video training, you know, we'll post it, you know, on I'll post it on PeerTube for the design team and we'll post it on YouTube, I'm sure. And then what you could do is we'll have like a little kit where you could get the um, link to the video and then some tasks that you could start building components out and you can kind of self-directed training. And so you could kind of learn, you know, you'll get the skill set of learning how to build components with you. And then you'll also be able to be contributing to the Fedora website at the same time. The other thing that we've been talking about is, and, and this is on me, so watch for communications from me, um, probably in the Fedora community blog and in our discourse, but we're talking about organizing um, a little mini hack fest with some invited guests from different areas of the Fedora project to make sure that they feel that if they wanna maintain, like say, say you're on um, some, I don't know, the working group for the workstation say, right? And the work for, for the working, the, the workstation should have some control over the content that shows up on the workstation website, right? So we want them to be able to come and say, okay, here's the content on our website. Oh, we need to change some text or update something or add something. We're gonna do a training 
um, where they can actually use the CMS that is built in. It's the Netlify CMS. It's open source. Um, so they can actually practice entering in the content and whatever, and then have a hack fest where we all grab, you know, a, a task of entering content. So we're given the, the text and then work on entering it in. We'll take the feedback from that process. If there's anything that needs to be tweaked in the CMS configuration or anything like that, fine tune everything. And then again, do sort of a self-service recorded video session that anybody who wants to grab a ticket off the queue from our repo and entering content can do that. So it can be sort of an asynchronous help as well. So that's what we were thinking. And I think, I think that's it for the presentation. Yeah, that's the last slide. So if anybody has questions, now's a good time to ask. Um, let's look. I'm sorry, but my mousing is a little weird. I have a Bluetooth mouse and the, the battery's dying. Will the new website be WCAG compliant for accessibility? Um, yes, I would hope so. I mean, certainly accessibility is a big goal in Fedora moving forward, it's going to be one of our focuses. So, you know, the thing about it is that because we're picking modern stacks that have accessibility testing and, um, you know, components built into them, um, we're hoping a lot of this will get a little bit for free, um, but it's certainly something that we want to build into testing and everything of the websites to make sure that our sites are accessible. Yeah. Um, let's see, here's another one. Oh, okay. So um, I can tell you a little bit about Netlify CMS and the way we have it configured. So yeah, the, the content ends up going into Git. It's a Git focused workflow, which is actually quite nice. It's not some kind of database type of driven thing. It's, it's Git based. Um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Syak or Ashlyn in the comments. But what ends up happening is when you fill out the content using the web UI of the CMS, it gets committed to the repo as a YAML file. So the content just lives in Git as YAML. Yep, yep, okay, cool. I didn't lie to you guys, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Any other questions? Anybody you want to help that needs guidance on where to start? I don't know what time we have either. We have like, I think five minutes-ish. We have about the five minutes. Does anybody have questions about the old websites? <laughs> Perfect talks so that everyone understands. Yes, I will tell myself that. We already have thank yous coming in. Um, cool. Let me just go back through the history and see if there's anything. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry for like, the, I'm just listening to the Beatles a lot. I could not resist. This gives me life. Um, yeah, and I guess one of the things I guess that might be worth pointing out is with the, the splitting subdomains, you know, the SEO stuff. I, you know, I see SEO and like people talking about SEO and it, it reminds me of like um, blockchain people, you know, like there's people who are obsessed with SEO and you get spam emails about SEO. And, oh my God, I just don't care. But having your website split across different subdomains instead of all in one website actually hurts your SEO, search engine optimization. So we're hoping that the big reunification here, getting the band back together will fix that. Um, let's see, I think there's another question. Um, I would like to work on FedoCal, but theming this site is a thing I'm not sure how to address. Okay, so FedoCal is an app and it's not part of this effort. Um, I'm not quite sure how FedoCal is written, unfortunately. So I don't know if I can give you guidance on that. I'm not sure if I can also give, but I'm pretty sure someone from doing the calls uh, can help. So, Edward, if you want to help, uh, join us uh, during one of the, the weekly calls, and probably someone uh, from the team would be able to uh, help you with that. So, yeah. Cool. Um, the history of the Fedora Project's website should be preserved, something for the museum, don't you think? Is there a museum? Do you mean like the the RPG little social party thing, work adventure? I think so. Oh, yeah, I mean, maybe. I don't know. Good I really like this one, but it was just so manual. It was hard to keep updated. Um, the site is then generated from Git in static as form, or is it dynamically generated by some in-background running server? 
Um, I think Syak and Ashlyn can probably speak more to that. I think yeah, I'm just the reading time. the question. Uh, and sites then generated from Git in static -ish form, or is it dynamically? OK, uh, so right now, uh, it's generated static in a static -ish form. But going forward, we are planning to play around a bit with SSR and stuff like that to see if we can have dynamically generated uh, uh, sites. But right now, everything is pretty static. But yeah, we are playing along with uh, various capabilities in Nuxt. And uh, we want to see where that takes us. Uh, yeah, and I guess the last question, and then we'll cut it there since we're kind of almost at time. How soon can we torpedo the old repos? Um, yeah, that's a good question. It's I think last question has already answered that. Uh, uh, we we are already we have already moved our uh, development flow to GitLab. So hopefully, once uh, the GitLab repos are a bit more mature, we can start looking at torpedoing the old repos on Azure. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. And um, let me just go back to that last slide. So if you want to contribute, here's pretty much all you need to know. Um, and of course, feel free to reach out to me or Syak or anybody else on the websites team. Join us in Matrix. That's like the central place to go to get involved. So thanks, everybody.